first thing a Dominican does when he comes to the United States is come to this neighborhood first. When I was 10 years old, I used to make like a tent. This here was like a safe haven for us. When you hear bullets gunshot, the first thing you do is duck, but then you start getting used to it and you don't duck no more. Dzień dobry moi drodzy, witam się z wami z Brooklynu. Plan na dzisiejszego vloga jest taki, że wsiadam zaraz do metra, jadę na Manhattan, a dokładniej na górny Manhattan, do dzielnicy Washington Heights, czyli chyba takiej najbardziej znanej latynoskiej dzielnicy w Nowym Jorku. Zapraszam. Witamy w Nowym Jorku, moi drodzy. Generalnie jazda komunikacją miejską tutaj, a w szczególności metrem, nie należy do najbardziej przyjemnych doświadczeń życiowych, ale z drugiej strony to jest coś, z czego Nowy Jork słynie. No kto z Was nie słyszał o nowojorskim metrze? Dojechaliśmy już na Washington Heights, jesteśmy na 158 ulicy. Oczywiście vlog w dużej części będzie po angielsku, więc włączcie sobie napisy, bo są. This is my friend Luis. What's up? Where are we at right now? We're in Washington Heights. This is a vibrant neighborhood, Dominican neighborhood. A, a, a little bit crazy like all neighborhoods, uh, but this is where I grew up all my life. They used to call me uh, the mayor when I used to be younger and a bit more crazy. <laughs> now I'm an old guy, retired, you know? I gotta ask you that because you're gonna tell us about the good old times, right? Yeah, yeah. How old are you, man? <laughs> I'm 47. <laughs> I thought you were like 38 tops, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I went to a place that I was frozen for many years. But here I'm back again, we're back again. We're back in life again. Hey, hey baby, baby, how are you? ¿Cómo está mamá? Aquí, 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 me están grabando Hola. ropa. Oh, estamos aquí, Macy, Macy, aquí, en unos seis de ¿Qué es Macy? I'm Macy because I sell the clothes. Ah, They call me Macy. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. This is 162 and right now this is a, a hot spot. Very hot. But it's early, so uh -huh. the, the drug dealers are sleeping now. <laughs> so it's pretty safe. <laughs> so we have frozen margaritas here at the barbershop. Beautiful, good stuff. <laughs> That's what I wouldn't expect at the barbershop. Salute. Salute. Godzina 12. Es fuerte. Fuerte. And we have something special here. This is uh, private. Mm -hmm. This is for private customers. All right. So you, you have to know someone in order to get that. All right. All right, brother. Let's go. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you just came back from work, which is a hotel. All right. And what is this place? This over here. I'm a partner of this barber shop, and on the weekends. Pecho, estoy para ti. Thank you. No, I, I got it, I got it. Right? No, right. So here on the weekend, I sell high-end clothes here. And I sell it at 90% off. So people go crazy when I sell clothes. And they call me Macy's around here. And you're just setting up your store here? Yes, I set, so the, I set the whole front up with racks and, 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 and tables. <laughs> These are all my bodyguards here. <laughs> they take care of my, my mobile store. He has a very long story. 
He used to be a big time drug dealer. He lost everything and he lives in a car now. He's a very nice guy, but the alcohol and the drugs ran his life to him. We're trying to help him out. He's a very nice person. He don't steal, he don't do nothing. But he's the loud voice in this neighborhood. Everyone loves him. He's a very nice person. I used to do this wall since 1985. This was my personal canvas. And through the years, I did many, uh, many murals here. You know, positive things for the kids and mm -hmm. just, you know, all type of stuff. And recently this year, it was done by Audible Mural Project, which I worked with them also as well. And out of courtesy, they did, uh, they put my son's name there because um, they knew about my history with the wall. My son passed away three years ago. So they put his name there, Chris Rivas with a hummingbird. Out of respect for me, myself, because this was originally the one I used to you know, work with. So, so you have a little memorial of your son on of my son, 163, right? Correct. Right? Yeah, correct. That's really beautiful, man. Thank you for sharing this. So you're like a big deal here in Washington yeah, Heights, something huh? Something like that. <laughs> and um, this one's in New Jersey. This one is gone. This one is right here. We can oh, go we right can now. There? Yeah, we can yeah, go yeah. right now. Yeah, cool. take, take a copy for yourself. Thank you. Jak chcielibyście zobaczyć? Murale to tema, to tutaj macie jego Instagram. This is my brother for 35 years. We've, yep. done, we've done good and bad, but now we're doing we're good. We're still here. We're, still <laughs> we're good in spirit, definitely. Most of our friends have died in the streets, but we survived the streets, we changed our life, and now we're all doing good for the community. We're on a different track, and we're here. Nice meeting you, man. Likewise, both. Thank you. All right. You know something? You selected the, the most amazing <laughs> man for that job. That's what I heard. The most immaculate man for that job. <laughs> Definitely. God bless me. I love, I love you, Rasta. Love you too. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> All right, I gotta ask you. Is there a single person in that neighborhood that doesn't know you? I was born and raised here. And remember, I was born and raised in 163rd. But we've been through how many different blocks and people know me. Yeah. This is a here our gourmet food. You want to try something? Come. ¿Cómo se llama esto? Patelito. Patelito. Yeah. And this is like typical Dominican. Oh, man. Every day, millions of Dominicans eat that <laughs> every day. Yeah. Every day, every day, bro. Patelito. This is our whole restaurant right uh -huh. here. She has 20 years right here on this block. To probujemy dominicanskiego patelito. To jest słodkawe. Nie spodziewałem się tego. Over here we don't go to the body shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have our own body shop here. These are well professional mechanics. You park it here, they'll change the whole engine. The whole here on the engine street. on the street. They will change your whole engine here in two days. Winter, summer, Hola. everything. <laughs> This is the back alley of 163rd. A lot of people have died here. A lot of people have been shot here. People have fallen out through the windows. When I was 10 years old, I used to make believe this is my house. I used to put crates of, of milk. I used to make like a tent. While people were selling drugs outside and killing each other, this here was like a safe haven for us. We used to play hide and seek and jump out of the window. I used to jump out from that second floor to over here, and I thought it was fun. So here we started hanging out. And then when we got started getting older and older, it wasn't hanging out no more. Then a lot of illegal things started happening here. But I grew up in this back alley. This connects you to five different buildings here. And now it's all cleaned up, no more kids. Gentrified. Gentrified. No one knows the history of this, of what used to go on. If you knew the neighborhood, that would be yes, really hard to catch you or if any you're other. Running from someone wearing blue, you come back here and then get lost because it connects you to different places, different kind of buildings. And if you know the window, each window is a different building. So you get up from the window and you hide. On my early 20s, 
I started recognizing, you know, that the neighborhood wasn't that great. When you get married and you start having kids, you start growing up and opening your eyes that you also don't, you don't want your kids to grow up or see what you have seen. You want to teach them about it, but you don't want them going through the experience. So slowly I started leaving the neighborhood, but my mother and my grandmother still lives here. And my wife's mother lives here. But now it's kind of like a quiet neighborhood, right? Yeah, compared it, to what it, it was it, in the com 80s. Compared to the 80s and 90s, this is this is beautiful. This is this is the suburbs right now. But was it that bad in the 80s? Every day there was a shooting, a robbing. And I seen people throwing out from the roof and land, and I go see the dead body. Oh my God! You know, I thought it was cool. I thought it was natural. And, I, and I'm seeing someone lay there, and I'm, for me, I'm like, wow. It's not like I was scared. And you know, when you hear bullets, gunshot, the first thing you do is duck. But then you start getting used to it and you don't duck no more. You just look, oh, okay. It was tough. In order to su survive it, you have to be tough. You cannot be weak. My experience made me the man who I am. I'm a man that know how to take care of myself. And also, I know how to take care of other people because I don't want them going to what I've been. Growing up here and coming back, seeing a change, you feel good about it. Mm -hmm. It's not like you, I'm not glorifying those days, you know. But I lived it. So I have to tell my story. And also I have to say the truth, what I lived going through those days. The first thing a Dominican does when he comes to the United States is come to this neighborhood first. Same people, but in buildings. Uh -huh. <laughs> Instead of living in houses or a poor sand box house, now we live in a building. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's really interesting because uh, I've met some guys from East New York you know and they were also telling me how was it in the 80s 90s and it seems like all New York was all over you know like gangs shootings yes, everyone tough. trying to take over another territory and stuff like that and it's crazy Just for because an example no one will ever take the train after 10 o'clock in the 80s no one. you have to be brave or you have to be armed to take a train a knife or a gun and go to work. Now, you could be in a train two or three in the morning and you feel pretty safe. Mm -hmm. Nine out of 10, no, nothing's gonna happen to you. And your son just graduated from one of the best yes, universities. Well, I'm, I'm in. very proud that my son, thank God, he, he came by the neighborhood to see his mother and to see his grandmother, but he never, never took the street side of Washington Heights. He concentrated, his mother was a good mother, and she made sure that he was in school every day and studying and doing the best he can. Kawałek dalej na tej samej ulicy mamy właśnie graffiti. To tema, którego poznaliście chwilę wcześniej, a tutaj sklep z torebkami, z jakimiś bibelotami, okularami. I gotta ask you, because I've been to different cities in, you know, in the US, and always there was a big problem with homeless people. So how, how does it work here in, maybe not in New York, but like Washington Heights? No, what, what's going on right now is um, through the pandemic, a lot of homeless didn't go to their shelters. So they did the whole year and a half in the pandemic out in the streets without their medicines, without their ser common services, health services. So things got out of control. They're living in the streets, they're living in the train, they're living in cars. Uh, they're becoming a little bit more aggressive. Uh, so the homeless situation in New York and Washington Heights has increased. Sadly, it has increased. Uh, hopefully now there's less restrictions. They can go back to their shelters, they can get their medicine, and things become more normal. Right there, right now, you can point out uh, there's a homeless, uh, they're hanging out there. There they live there. It's a main yeah. plaza, but no one from the neighborhood sits down and takes fresh air there. Because they're a bit scared of what might go on to the homeless. A lot of noise, a lot of screaming, fighting for a few bucks. You know, emotionally disturbed, it's, it, it's sad. A lot of famous names have come to the United Palace. 
right. and the movie Washington Heights was filmed here. I haven't seen it. Yes. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I also buy my fruits here locally. <laughs> You're trying to avoid the big supermarkets? Yes, yes. Uh, it's uh, cheaper buying local from your uh, normal deli or fruit market. A lot of people are, are, are fruit produce and they're connected. They'll go straight to the source in Hunts Point and buy wholesale. And they will just charge a few dollars extra and they'll sell it to the public almost at wholesale price. So that's why people are always shopping here and buying fruits in the streets. Jesteśmy teraz właśnie przy tym dworcu autobusowym, a tutaj mamy biznesik Luisa. Chcę jeszcze pogadać chwilę z Luisem o tym biznesie i tak dalej, ale siedzę tutaj już 40 minut i nie ma nawet takich 30 sekund, żeby usiąść pogadać. Cały czas po prostu przychodzą ludzie po soki, po hot dogi i tak dalej, więc no, dzieje się. Luis, it's been like an hour since we got here and you're busy all the time. You have a lot of customers, huh? <laughs> yes, um, everything is well, I'm happy. Uh, things is getting better, thank God. When did you open? I opened uh, 2019 September. So um, how was the recent times for you? Because like 2020 wasn't the best time oh, for man, business, 2020 huh? 2020 was very challenging. You know, I just had six months open and I was doing great. And I had, you know, big dreams for this. And I still do, of course, thank God. Um, then I don't know where I lost 99% of my customers. I closed the business for about five months. And when I opened back up, I thought, you know, something, I knew it was gonna be slow, but not that slow. I had three employees, I lost all my employees. So now it's coming back. I see the sun at the end of the tunnel. Uh, things is picking up. I have two workers um, working for me. I'm also here all day. When I get out of my second job, I come here and I close. I have customers that buy every day. I have a customer that buys once a week. And I have a customer that buys once a month. And I treat them with respect. I am honored for them to come here and buy from me. They could go somewhere else, but they choose to buy from me. A lot of people come out of their way and take their long way to work yeah. and they stop here just to say hi, even they buy a water. And based on the Google reviews of your business, I'm just checking it out right here, 4.9, 270 reviews. I'm, I'm so proud of that, you know, I just been, I've been open for about a year and a half. Uh -huh. It's so many great reviews. People are, they, 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 they feel connected. I have seven different milks here. I have acai bowls, I have dragon fruit bowls. So you have a lot of different things, but where is the Polish flag, huh? My Polish flag <laughs> to my Polish viewers, please forgive me. I don't have enough space, but I will make space and I, I will mean, buy I my mean, Polish flag. There, there, there was a sign there, there was a sign there. But I think for I think the Polish community, one of my best friends is from Poland. And now that I've met Cash, I, I'm gonna consider him family and my best friend also. Here we are. If you only one or two Polish guys in Washington Heights, come see me please. <laughs> Bo zobaczcie ile jest flag, oczywiście głównie Ameryka Łacińska, ale no polskiej flagi nie ma. Tutaj sobie możecie zobaczyć wszystkie specjały, które można kupić u Luisa. You're saying that the best seller is the boss, right? Yes. Can I get one, please? Yes, sir. <laughs> I will make the boss right in front of you. 
<laughs> On the balls, we've used fresh bananas, fresh strawberries, fresh blueberries. We use pure coconut milk. Mm -hmm. Most people like it natural. Some Latinos will add sugar to it. I Let's go healthy. It. Let's go healthy. But you have to try it with a little banana. All right, yeah, let's do it. You're officially the boss today. <laughs> with my nice signature pink straw. Thank you. My pleasure. Dime, amor, ¿qué te hago? Dame un acai bol. Acai bol, ok. Dobra. To jest spoko, bo generalnie, jak widzicie, Luis ma naprawdę sporo klientów, bo w Stanach wcale nie jest chyba tak łatwo znaleźć takie, wiecie, zdrowe soki, gdzie nie macie mnóstwo cukru i nie wiem, no byliśmy teraz na kawie w Dunkin' Donuts, no to ta kawa po prostu jakby mi tam pół kilo cukru dla nich. Spoko, naprawdę fajnie. You're like a subway for uh, healthy food, huh? <laughs> right now we're making a fresh acai bowl. Mm -hmm. I said healthy food and then you added the Hershey chocolate. <laughs> this is a custom made for my customers. I'm the number one spot right now in Washington Heights for acai bowls. No i znowu zrobiła się kolejka. Chyba dzisiaj za bardzo nie pogadamy. All right, Luis, I can see that you're busy as hell, so I don't want to take too much of your time, but I have one question. Because you have three jobs right now, yeah. right? You have your own business, you're working at different places and like, what's the goal? Because there is some bigger goal behind it, right? The bigger goal in life is work less when you become older. So I want to set my future up, I want to set my family up. But there will be no worries when we become older. You know, I want to sacrifice now a lot but when I become on my early 50s, be a bit more relaxed, be stuff, have less responsibilities, and be more financially secure. It's about feeling good and helping our others. That's my goal. How many hours a week do you work? <laughs> Just... <laughs> I don't even <laughs> I leave my house at 4.30 in the morning and I get to my house at 10.30 at night. Shower, play with my kids a little bit. If they're up, sometimes they're not up, they're, they're in bed already. I work about 18 hours a day, seven days a week. You look like you're 47, you look like you're 38 <laughs> and you have so much energy. Have you always been like that or it's just... Yes. It's Thank God, God gave me good health. I've been, I've been exercising for a long time. I, uh, I'm a runner. When I'm in my good times and my good days, I run 14 miles in one day. You've got a customer. Hello, how are you? One hot dog must in sell He has a try a New York hot dog. He's famous because they have Polish sausages, but not a. Not an American Nathan's hot dog. Wherever you were delivered before, you come here, you're going, you're going to get hooked on I guess I, I have to try one before I leave, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's give you a New York Nathan's hot dog. What's the what's the deal with the hot dogs? Why, why the Nathan's are so popular? It's 100% beef. No additional adjective. It's been around. And guess, you have to know the history of Nathan's hot dog. It's Polish. Yes. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That was a wild guess. I was just like. <laughs> yes. So the Sky most Kiva. popular hot dogs in the USA was created or was bought by Polish. No, moi drodzy, Nathan's famous założyciel Nathan Hand worker, immigrant from Poland. Classic Nathan's hot dog. 100 year old company by a Polish man. <laughs> God bless Poland. Nie powinienem chyba pokazywać na filmie jakim hot dog, prawda? Cięcie. Mhm. Mm Nie już naprawdę spoko. Jak miałbym wam go opisać jednym słowem, to smakuje jak USA. You will say. You will say. You will say. You will say. Luis. 
Thank you so much for finding time for me today to show me around, to share your story, because it's, you know, dark side, light side, everything, you know, it's just, uh, just like, like the life, right? So uh, I, I've been through a lot throughout the years, but I am blessed to be here. I'm so proud that you came to Washington Heights, this beautiful neighborhood, vibrant neighborhood, where it's a strong community of love, of laughter, of music, a little crime like in every country and every neighborhood. But this is a positive neighborhood. This is a positive vibe. And we are thriving and we're becoming better and better. Thank you, Cash, for coming to Washington Heights. Thank you for showing me around, man. Okay, once again, man. My brother, I love you. Thank you Have so fun. much. Be safe on All your right. trips. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, my brother. No moi drodzy, mam nadzieję, że wam się podobało. Jestem naprawdę wdzięczny Luisowi, że znalazł chwilę, żeby nas oprowadzić po Washington Heights. Wiadomo, zobaczyliśmy tak naprawdę tylko główną ulicę, bo mieliśmy mało czasu. Tutaj jest na pewno zdecydowanie więcej do pokazania, jakieś parki i tak dalej, ale jak sami widzieliście, jak sami słyszeliście, facet po prostu zasuwa na trzy etaty w kółko, więc i tak super że znalazł dla nas tyle czasu. Jak widzicie, troszeczkę testuję taką nową formę vlogów, w których ja się za wiele nie pojawiam, tylko staram się znaleźć ciekawych ludzi, ciekawe historie i po prostu pokazać Wam to w taki przystępny i prosty sposób. Naprawdę super, że Luis podzielił się tymi historiami, bo no, jak widzieliście, życie i generalnie wychowywanie się w Nowym Jorku w latach 60., 70., 80. nie należało do najłatwiejszych, więc jeśli mogę Was o coś prosić, to jeżeli będziecie kiedyś w tych rejonach, Tutaj w Nowym Jorku wpadnijcie do Luisa, powiedzcie siema, powiedzcie, że jesteście ode mnie. A jeżeli się tutaj nie wybieracie, to i tak zerknijcie sobie na Instagrama Luisa, napiszcie mu jakieś pozdrowienia, zostawcie followa, żeby jakoś udało mu się bardziej wybić z tym biznesem, bo generalnie cały problem polega na tym, że tutaj bardzo ciężko trafić, jeżeli się wejdzie tym głównym wejściem. Jak sobie wejdziecie na jego Instagram, to teraz zrobiliśmy zdjęcia, żeby ludzie wiedzieli, jak tam dotrzeć. I wydaje mi się, że śmiesznie e, całkiem wyszły. Pomogę mu to tam ogarnąć na Instagramie. E, dajcie również znać, jak Wam się podoba ta taka forma vlogów, których nie za dużo nie ma. Wydaje mi się, że jeżeli będą fajni ludzie i fajne historie, to postaram się właśnie w taki sposób to przekazywać. I co? I to by było na tyle. Na razie. Trzymajcie się. Cześć.